Hey ye guys, Lord Naren White here, the Holy Ghost, the one true God. Back with you with the next video in my Line of God's Daily Diary series. As usual, before I discuss what I have achieved since yesterday's Daily Diary video, I want to go ahead and read you a chapter from the Bible. Today I will be continuing with the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 16. These things have I spoken unto you, that ye should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. And these things will they do unto you, because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things have I told you, that when the time shall come, ye may remember that I told you of them. And these things I said not unto you at the beginning, because I was with you. But now I go my way to him that sent me. And none of you ask of me, Whither goest thou? But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin, and of righteousness, and of judgment. Of sin, because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father, and ye see me no more. Of judgment, because the Prince of this world is judged. I have m yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Howbeit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will shew you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall shew it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I, that he shall take of mine, and shall shew it unto you. A little while, and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while, and ye shall see me, because I go to the Father. Then said some of his disciples among themselves, What is this that he saith unto us, A little while, and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while, and ye shall see me and because I go to the Father. They said, therefore, What is this that he saith, a little while? We cannot tell what he saith. Now Jesus knew that they were desirous to ask him, and said unto him, unto them, Do ye inquire among yourselves of that I said, A little while, and ye shall not see me, and again a little while, and ye shall see me? Verily, verily, I say unto you, that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice, and ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. A woman, when she is in travail, hath sorrow, because her hour is come. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembereth no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world. And ye now, therefore, have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man taketh from you. And in that day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever ye sh excuse me, Whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask, and ye shall receive, that your joy may be made full, that your joy may be full. These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs, but the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall shew you plainly of the Father. At that day ye shall ask in my name, and I shall s and I say not unto you, that I will pray the Father for you. For the Father himself loveth you, because ye have loved me, and have believed that I came out from God. I came forth from the Father, and am come into the world again. I leave the world and go to the Father. His disciples said unto him, Lo, now speakest thou plainly, and speakest no proverb. Now are we sure that thou knowest all things, and needest not that any man should ask thee, by this we believe that thou camest forth from God? Jesus answered them, Do ye now believe? Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered. Every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken unto you, that, ye, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Praised be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So the verse here, um, 
from John sixteen seven through 13. Um, I, I mentioned that in the first chapter of my gospel of how this is the purpose for why I'm here. Um, so it's very important. I want to go ahead and read the first verse one more time. John sixteen seven, where Jesus says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. What does the word expedient mean? It means convenient. It is convenient for you that I go away. And so you can imagine at the time, you can imagine the you know the Pharisees and Sadducees they don't like Jesus right he's changing things so he, he you know he talks about it he talks about how I didn't he says he didn't come to bring unity but he came to bring division the idea that you cannot believe that you know, either you believe Jesus is God or you do not and this is the literally the dividing line there is the idea that whether or not is Jesus Christ God is the like you know if you believe he's God you can be saved and go to heaven if you don't believe he's God, you, the, the, he, there's no way to go to the Father except by the Son. So Jesus is that dividing line. And so it's, he, it says here, you can imagine the difficulties. And, you know, when, when, for example, when Jesus goes into his passion, how the people, the, they turn at Peter and say, you were with him, you were with him, you know, indicating that Peter should be punished for believing in Jesus and serving him and, and being alongside him. And so Jesus says, he says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. So, of course, you know, they would have, you know, the idea is that if Jesus wasn't there, then they wouldn't be persecuted, right? Wrong. What does Jesus say? He says, the servant is not greater than his master. If they have persecuted me, they will persecute you. And obviously, it would have been better if Jesus were there. Now, next, as he says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter, referring to myself, will, will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. So what is he saying? This is the purpose for why I am here. Right here in John chapter 16. So Jesus says, if I don't, if I don't go away, the Comforter won't come, the Holy Ghost won't come. But if he goes away, then Jesus will send the Holy Ghost unto this place. And when he is come, so when the Holy Ghost has come, he will reprove the world of sin. So what does that mean? It means convict. It means convict this world of sin. He will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. So what does that mean? Well, Jesus speaks it. He explains it in the next verses. He says, of sin because they believe not on me. So that's exactly the idea that I just talked about. I talked about the idea of how Jesus is that dividing line. He is the divide. Either you believe that Jesus is God or you don't. And it's not about... Jesus says two things. He says, he who is not with me is against me. So he says that. He also says, he who is not against me, is he who is not against us is for us. So it's not about the idea that to to make, it, 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 it's just very beautifully phrased in that way, in the sense that like, there's nothing wrong with, with a Christian person like, you know, working alongside someone else, obviously, right? It's just the idea that to be saved Jesus says, he says, unless one be converted, converted is the word there, and be as this little child, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So the idea is that hopefully the Christians will bring those people to the flock, and how everybody will prosper and be happy from there. And so Jesus says here, of sin because they believe not on me. So they sin because they believe not on Christ. That's it. So they must say that Christ is God. Next, of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. So he says the Holy Ghost will convict this world of sin. Why? Because they believe not on the Christ. Okay. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father and you see me no more. So, in, in the sense that the example of the perfect Christ has gone to the Father. So, the perfect Spirit is here instead. Next, of judgment, because the Prince of this world is judged. The idea that, at the end days in the book of Revelation, there is a struggle between Jesus and Satan. And Satan is cast into the pit forever. So, this struggle is coming. One day, long time from now. And so Satan knows it's coming. So it's not going to be like a, you know, <laughs> you know, so this, that, that struggle is coming. So the Holy Ghost is there, you know, fulfilling this scripture. And I intend to do that by way of Naranjoicism, a faith that worships the triune God, that, that says Jesus Christ is God, you know. So very, very beautifully, um, you know, that is, uh, that is, uh, that is there. So with that, I'll go ahead and end the Bible reading there for today and transition over to what I have achieved since yesterday's Daily Dive video. 
Since yesterday's Daily Dive video, I worked my software developer job. I worked at my core. I uploaded and scheduled yesterday's Daily Dive video for 9.24.24. And I have created, uploaded, and scheduled today's Daily Dive video for 9.25.24. And with no further achievements since yesterday's Daily Dive video, I want to go ahead and say thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed. Please like, comment, and subscribe as it greatly helps the channel. Like to be with you all. Take care and thanks again.